Today I want to take a look at Power Automate and the HTTP headers available from our trigger event. So what we're going to do is take a look at when an item is created from a SharePoint list. and. So here we have a new Power Automate MS flow, and this flow is going to trigger when an item is created. We'll go ahead and pick out the site, and we're going to provide a list name. All right, we have our site and our list name. We'll go ahead and save. And for our first action, we're going to take a string, and we're going to initialize that string as a blank value. Now, inside of Power Automate, we do have a system variable called Trigger Outputs Header. And what we're going to do is take a look at that. And we're actually going to modify this to an array. We're going to give it Trigger Output Headers. Go ahead and save. OK, perfect. So here you can see that this expression is Trigger Outputs, open close parentheses, square bracket, single quote and the word headers. Trigger outputs are the outputs of the trigger event. Headers provide the HTTP headers of that event. Now there are times and this might be useful to give you a little bit of context as to how the flow triggered and what the context of the trigger event was. There may be some automatic inputs, some system context, environment variables basically the setting of how the trigger occurred and is that helpful for your flow execution. So we'll come on over to our test list. We'll add a new item and trigger the flow. We'll add hello world to our test list. Let the flow execute. And here we have a type mismatch that the type cannot be called string, the variable type array only supports types of array. Okay, fair enough. When an item is created, click to download. We'll come in here, check our headers. There are a few different ones available. And if we were to take this over to somewhere where we can format it a little, We'll create a test.json file, bring in all of that expression and format document automatically. So now we can see the headers. Now this is kind of interesting because these are all automatic inputs that are coming from the trigger event. There are times when they might be helpful for you, depending on what you're debugging, how the flow is supposed to execute, just a little bit of context of where did this trigger event come from. And these headers are gonna be different based on the trigger event. Right now we're doing create an item in SharePoint list. Other trigger events will have other headers. But it is kind of interesting because you get a lot of different things about ASP.NET, content type expiration, content length, the date. There is a location here which kind of speaks to where it was run and hosted in Azure. Um, even SharePoint build numbers. So there's, there's a lot of potential data that might be helpful for you and how you're designing your flows. And this is an automatic input. It's something that every trigger output is going to have. And different triggers will have different headers available. So you may want to explore these as you're working through your flow design. And basically, you know, keep an eye on this for any inputs that might be useful. And maybe in our particular case for this one on the SharePoint trigger, we may want the request duration. We might want you know, a little bit of detail on the request ID. Anything that may help us with how this was triggered through the SharePoint event uh, as far as the creation of the, the new list item. So you know, for example, we'll just take the SP request duration and we'll pick that one as a header we'd like to explore. We'll come back over here, edit MS flow. We'll look at the same thing. Yes, and instead of just all headers, we're now going to index into that one request duration, change the data type to string. So now we're getting more specific. We're not saying all headers, we're saying one specific header by giving it the index of the header name. We can go ahead and run it again with a recently used trigger. And now the flow is going to execute and be able to grab that context and put it into a variable. So there's a lot of potential ways of using this as you're designing your flows. And each trigger condition is going to have different inputs available. So something to keep in mind that the trigger itself does have trigger output. And those might provide a little bit of debugging, context, just different things to help you troubleshoot and support your flow. So you don't always have to go 
reach for a data connection, reach for another lookup. There are some inputs that the trigger itself provides, and most people don't come in here to explore the output of the opening trigger block. But once we come in here, we see that there's a lot of data available, and you know there are times where this might be useful. You know, content type ID, which list did it start with, there are some tokens. You have a lot of different data available. Who was the user that opened the event? So something to explore that, you know, as we're designing our flows, we might want to come in and use some of this information, you know, who authored it, the list item ID. These are all things that you know that you're going to have, like the ID of the list item. This is the list item that triggered. But did you know that it actually gives you details on the author? that it gives you the claims for their login. Um, there's a lot of information available here. So explore how the trigger block provides context. Explore what these values look like. And for me, you know, coming in here to explore it, copy the text, bring it over to VS Code, save as a .json file, right? And that's how we get our auto format. That if we save it as .json, we can explore the values of our trigger event. And we might be able to design a more intelligent flow, one that has better context of how it started, and then use that in our variables so that we don't have to do quite as many lookups because the value might already be available from the trigger event. So that's how we can use trigger context to better design our flows. Thanks for watching.